The Langdon Tactical LTT RDO 92C. This is up next on QRC. And before we get started, let's go ahead and talk about our channel sponsor, Tag Firearms. Go ahead and follow them on Instagram or visit them at tagfirearms.com where you can find some of the best drops from Noveski, Triarch, Knight's Armament, BNT, and many more. Go ahead and check out Tag Firearms and let's get into this. This was actually provided by one of the viewers. Thank you so much for hooking me up on this. Um, we wanted to check this out. I had been issued an M9 when I was in the Marine Corps, and I was extremely curious on the differences between the M9 and what Langdon can do for a 92 series gun. And I was also back and forth on if I wanted to play with a Centurion or a C. And I got to figure out all those answers during this review process. I've been kind of curious about this for a while, mainly because when I was in the Marine Corps, one of the sidearms I was issued was an M9. I kind of had some biased opinions because it wasn't really the best gun for me back then. I can't really remember all the things I didn't like about it, but I do remember that I didn't really like it. So I was obviously pretty curious when these Langdons started to come out and they started to kind of take over online and a lot of people that were shooting 2011s were shooting Langdon tactical guns. So I figured, you know what, I really want to see what they're all about. And now after shooting it for a bit, I can tell you a little bit about it. Some of the things Langdon Tactical does to these, these all come with stainless steel barrels on them. Some of these come with MP3 fire controls. This does not. These also have Langdon. Um, Langdon does his magic to the, to the triggers and reduces the trigger pull and smooths it out significantly. It also has a bob hammer. These are decocker only, and these come with Langdon grips, which they are actually pretty comfy in the hand. But don't ask me, I'm kind of weird when it comes to grips, definitely on steel frame guns and metal frame guns. I like having the most aggressive grips possible because, you know, two birds, one stone. I like to exfoliate my skin while I shoot. This happens to be a falling block operating mechanism on here, which means that the barrel does not tilt like most firearms, like, you know, let's say a 1911 or, or Glock 19. Also, obviously you can see that most of the top of the barrel is exposed on this as well. And there's not a lot of slide on here. So that actually equates into a pretty unique shooting experience in its own sense. Um, a lot of the times when I was shooting this, when I first shot it, I wasn't sure if it went off or if I had a malfunction because it was so smooth and I just wasn't used to shooting something with this low of a slide mass on there. That definitely equates up to good follow-up shots and everything else with this gun. So it's got a lot of pros and checks in that category. Another few things that I like about this, this is probably the smoothest double action trigger I have ran. Now, granted, I'm not a double action, single action type of guy. I will say that right off the gate. Those most of the time turn me off. I'd rather just run a striker or single action only. But for this being a double action, it's got a really good pull. I believe the double action pull on this is around six pounds with the single action pull being around three and a half, four. Um, one thing to note, if you are used to single action pulls, when you actually get this back, that single action ends pretty far back on the wall, very far back. There is a good amount of take up on that, and then obviously the break. So that is something I didn't remember when I first shot this. I picked it up, I shot it the first time. After the double action shot, I was like, what's going on here? Uh, hmm, maybe there was a malfunction. Well, you just gotta work your way way back to the trigger. Now, once I got used to it again, I was definitely popping some real good dingers, so that wasn't an issue at all. A few other things I wanna talk about with Langdon, specifically the 92C. So, if you're like me, you're always in search of probably your best carry gun, right? I like to keep them around 15 rounds. That just, you know, for me, I feel like those are always concealable at 15 and lower. Um, so I wanted to have something concealable, but very shootable. So one of the biggest things I wanted to know the difference between is if this would fit my hand better than a Centurion, a full grip, or was this the way to go? 
I will tell you, after playing with this, I would much rather have a full grip. A full grip is not much bigger than this, but this, see, the biggest issue for this right here is the fact that without a magazine in it, we're just gonna dump that magazine, bye, into the abyss. Um, without the full magazine in there, my pinky's hanging off the side. I do not like my pinky hanging on the bottom of that. I like to have a full firing grip before I even insert a magazine, even with my issue with my arm being in a sling. It just helps me. Certainly, if I'm going to pull this from concealment, I'd want to have a little bit more on the gun um, because, you know, sometimes you barely get your hand on that thing, but it's coming out. And the more room you got to grab it, probably the better. So that's one thing that kind of eliminated this for a carry gun for me. This probably will not work for you if you are the type of guy that wants to make sure that you have a full firing grip before the magazine's in there. Note that this is not one of those guns. It's not far off, but you do have to have a magazine to have a full firing grip inside the gun. Recoil impulse on this. I don't know really what to compare this to other than maybe a slide that's had a decent amount of material taken off of it. The slide mass on this is very low. You don't feel a lot of that reciprocating to be honest. You mainly just feel the force of the bullet pushing the muzzle up. That's really about it. You don't feel too much more. So it's got a lot of checks in that category. The double action on this is really nice, you know. Um, give yourself a nice 90 degree bend on the trigger you can pull straight through that has got a lot of checks as well because most of the time double actions are kind of garbage the single action on this like i said before it's got a little bit of take up on it uh, a little bit is actually an understatement it's got a decent amount and then once you get to the actual wall it's pretty clean as well now would i pick this over a 2011 it could be something that I also have. I don't know if I would pick this personally over a 2011. I have a lot of history behind 2011 and 1911 platforms, and I just personally prefer the single action only mechanism. I just feel like you can get a lot of crisp trigger and a more predictable trigger out of that. But I will say if you're a double action only fan or double action single action fan, I would say that this is definitely something to look into. I wouldn't say that it's better or worse than anything this is certainly top tier like i said i'm not i've never been a big beretta fan but this has made me change my mind significantly and i never thought i'd say this but if i happen to grab a centurion i would carry it and keep it because you know it, it really changed my mind a lot on the 92 series Another thing to note that Langdon Tactical does is the RDO system in here. The RDO system in here is milled extremely low into this slide. Now, these are a little bit higher than your typical sights you would get on these, but these are actually pretty low for red dot sights. Um, to my knowledge, until, they, until Beretta came out with the recent 92A4, I believe, the M9A4, they didn't have an optic system on there, and I'm pretty sure they took a lot of notes from Langdon one making the optic system, so, you know, we probably have him to thank for that. Well, obviously, this is certainly not the M9 I was issued, and I am so happy for that, because if it was, I probably wouldn't be speaking so highly of it. During my 2009 deployment with 2.8, I was actually issued an M9. We got into this one firefight. We were in this canal for quite a bit. I ran dry in my primary, I pulled that thing out. I don't know what I was thinking trying to shoot at them anyways, but I think I was just trying to keep fire in their direction. Neither here nor there, don't worry about it, mind your business. I will say one thing, it did not turn out well for me with the M9 I was issued. I'm not sure what was going on with it. I tapped racked probably about three times. At, at that point, I just figured that it wasn't worth it, and I ran and grabbed two more mags. So that was something that stuck with me for a very long time with the M9, is that it may or may not go bang when you wanted it to. Now, like I said, keep in mind, that was back then. This is now completely different gun. Mm. Bang. It did it. If you're on the fence about it and you have the money for it, I'd say go ahead and give it a shot. If you have a friend that has one, go ahead and shoot one. And certainly if you've ever been issued one of these in the military, check one out because this might redefine how you view the 92 series. 
So if you happen to see one of these in stock, I would say pick one up. This is not your typical service pistol M9, and I am not the one to give any compliments to the M9. I did not enjoy it when I was in, but this is definitely not that. It is far superior to that. So with confidence, you are getting a fine piece of machinery, and the touches that Langdon Tactical put on this are bar none probably the best you could possibly look for in the Beretta platform. All right, guys, that was my final thoughts on everything. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time on QRC.